And our last competitor here in round one, and a man who also needs to get into the uh, full pull by going 130 feet is Bob Zundel from New Alexandria, PA. And as you might expect, Steel City Shaker means he lives definitely close to Pittsburgh. He's got an 88 Chevy with 440 under the hood. Tell me a little bit about him. Bob Zundel runs a farm machinery repair shop in New Alexandria, Pennsylvania. When he's not on the road trying to compete all over the United States and Canada, I say trying because Bob told me recently that he sat for 16 hours in one spot on the road and couldn't go anywhere because of ice all over the track. Good view of the, the sled. And the That's a great pass for Bob Zundell. I'm glad to see the, the truck come to life like that. He's really had some hard luck. But I'll tell you one thing, man was in the top five in 1987, and he's going to make a mark on him in 1988. And for Bob Zundell and the Steel City Shaker, a night of 123 flat, 123 feet evens. Are you ready? Yep. Let's go. This is... Corner number one, Mike Slater and the Darth Invader. He went full pole first tonight in his 88 Chevy Astro van, and he's up against the rice burner, Bill Romesburg, out of Alberton, PA. All right, it's all on the line now, Mike. Darth Invader against uh, the rice burner. Both had great success first time out. Both of the trucks are thunder trucks. I mean, they just filled all the horsepower in the world. Right now, it's going to be a driver's situation. Evenly matched pair of trucks. I would say that neither one of these trucks has the advantage. Of course, you go to the pull-off in the same order that you pull the sled the first time. But Dart Invader first, Rice Burner second. It's going to be very close. I would not pick a winner, but let's see what happens as he turns loose the brand new 1988 band out of Michigan. Green lights on the sled. He'll get green on the track. Here comes Mike. Box tops out a beautiful pass. Yeah. He had the motor thundering. Not a full pull, but definitely a good, good time, good, good distance to beat. It's going to make it tough on anyone that the gentleman to run behind him. When you lay down a bull like that, you're really going to have a tough pass coming up, following him out. Here he comes again now. Let's take a look. Mike wastes no time in lowering the, the throttle, shoving the right hand forward, opening the butterflies up. The truck comes up in the air. This truck got good balance on it. That's the way you want it to pad about three times as it goes down the track. The box is topped out on the sled, all the weight hanging down on it. The pressure's on him, but a beautiful job. Now it's the measurement time. 116 feet and one inch. Mike Slater at the wheel of the Darth Invader, and that is the distance that Bill Roseburg has to beat if he wants to win tonight. And here is the rice burner. He knows exactly what he has to do. He has got to better what Mike Slater just accomplished. And as Mike just told us, it is not going to be easy for Bill Romesburg because at the end of this track, right at about the 120-foot marker, that's where the Georgia clay, that's where the dirt is really torn up quite a bit. It's going to be a real test at the end of this poll for Bill Romesburg. Oh, he backs up and gets all set to go. Mike, he knows exactly what he has to do. Bill's been watching the track during the latter part of the class. He knows exactly where the, the bad spots are. The truck's hooking up well. I think Bill's got the capabilities of driving the truck as well as anyone here tonight. This is a very fine competitor. This gentleman, truly a pleasure to be around at all times. He'll roll the slack out of the chain, and when he comes to thunder, you'll watch the rice burner as he'll like the tires, and all he wants to do is go past the mark laid down by Mike Slater. Here comes the right I don't know. I don't know. That was going to be too close to call from our vantage point, but one thing about it, the rice burner 
really did a great job. He did fall off into the holes, but he only one tire did it. He had good traction. I remember 116 and a small amount is the mark that he needed to beat. I think he may have done it, but it's going to be up to our measuring crew. Ever so important measurement coming up between first and second. And you were exactly right, Mike. He broke down, or the, the track should stop right where that track was worn out. Let's look at this again. Bill on the throttle early, and he had to be. He had to get all he could get early because the sled is a lot heavier than it was the original part of the pull. The butterflies are wide open. Front end comes up. Now watch those rear tires. He's right in that area where that Slater came to a halt. The tires hit it, and down he goes. A beautiful job. He just really had a fine pass. All right, we're going to get the measurement right here live. We're not going to have to wait and get it tabulated. We're going to take a look at the actual measurement, and then the, the uh, young lady who does all this is going to tell us firsthand. So the measuring crew out of Florida doing a whale of a job tonight. Jim Harris, the official with yeah. the United States Hot Rod Association, right there on this ever so important measurement. Here it is. 117 and a half is, I, I believe, what she said. What? 117, seven and a half. Well, that's, an, that's enough to put him into the number one spot by a foot or so and a beautiful job. Bill did a great job, drove the truck absolutely perfect. Of course, he drove it perfect. He won the class. A fine job, Bill Roseberg, the rice burner. And you know, there's a happy man. The crowd's very proud of him. And he should be a beautiful truck, an outstanding job. Knew what he had to do, and he went out and did it.